Hey everybody, Spine Ticks Pressing here, and I'm back with Strange Adventures number 205. Stick around, because we're going to be evaluating this book for pressable defects and developing a plan to correct them. So, here we go! Strange Adventures 205, it's the first appearance of Dead Man. And in my last video, a part of this series, I cracked the book open and we uh, took a couple looks at the book. So right now, we're going to be going a little more in-depth into the correctable defects. We're going to take a look at the grader's notes for this particular book and, uh, and whatnot. So I'm really excited about this book. This book, as you can see... Uh, was a CGC Universal grade of 4.5 with off-white pages. And this particular book, I think, presents much better than a 4.5. So I think there's some potential uh, to bring this one up. And uh, let's start by taking a look at the grader's notes. All right, here we are at the CGC website. And uh, they have a really nice feature now, uh, thanks to the community. Um, this used to be a paid feature. Uh, I think it was only accessible for members. And then I think there was a, a pay feature or there was going to be a pay feature for this. And the community spoke up and said that we wanted access to graders notes and information on books and the CGC came around. And I think it showed the power of the community so uh, what you can see here on the page is uh, you go to CGC, you can do CGC uh, Comics Lookup, and you type in the certification number on the blue label right here and hit go. And when you do, this information over here to the left will pop up. So here's my book. And you can see I've got the, uh, the grade. Uh, it was uh, graded in 2022, so relatively new. Off-white, uh, 4.5. And then we get some information. Uh, the covers by uh, Carmine Infantino and George Rudos. And you get some uh, key information here. And we've got our graders' notes over here um, on the left. So it says uh, total grade, this is interesting, total graded by CGC 4.5 with uh, 99. You can see there's quite a few books, although not a whole lot. I mean, 900 is a lot, but some books you know like you might take an asm 300 there probably are uh tens of thousands of books higher than a 4.5 so uh, the goal our goal is to bump this one up and so let's take a look at the graders notes so uh the first note says uh there's on the right bottom of the front cover and there is it's relatively small in my opinion um I have another document that I can pull up where we can take a look at the size of pieces that are missing. But as far as I can tell, it's the only piece. Uh, there is a small piece on the left, bottom left corner that's missing. But it, this one's relatively small. So I'll put a little photo and you can see the, the uh, relative size of the, uh, the chip in comparison to uh, a ruler. So that one there, that's not going to be correctable. Um, that's just an, an SOL. Uh, it's going to it's gonna knock the, the value of this book or knock it down in, in terms of grading. And you can see there the second thing on the grader's notes is listed as foxing to cover. And I think this is a huge portion of why this book's grade is suffering. Uh, the foxing on the book appears to be isolated to the back page and uh, perhaps a little bit on the inside pages and that can be treated and it can be corrected and i'll get to that more when, when we get to the process of actually working on the foxing you can see the next thing is there is some light creasing to the cover and uh, i really have some um uh, we'll look at that as well but i i, I really kind of beg to differ i think there's some uh, more significant creasing to the cover than and what's listed. Uh, it says moderate cover tanning. I think that's mostly ref is referring to the inside of the book, inside the, uh, inside the cover. And then it says multiple crease cover uh, breaks color. So uh, that's not going to be correctable. 
So the big pieces that we will be able to correct are the creasing to the cover and uh, possibly a little bit of lightening the tanning to the book and uh, lightening the foxing. And I think those two things uh, should help the book. If I do it right and I don't do it excessively, should help the book uh, move up in grade. So before we develop a plan of attack for correcting this book, we need to know what the visible defects are on the book. In order to do Boston brand justice, we need to look at the book holistically. CGC does not. They just list a few notes in their graders notes, but we want to know all of the different defects in the book. So we're going to begin by looking at the spine and focusing on the spine, but it's very important that you don't flip the book over more than what you have to, even with an older book like this, especially because these spine stress lines have weakened the book to a certain degree. So what you're going to see me do with the book is I'm going to use a, an additional backer board to put on top uh, whenever I want to flip the book from the front to the back. But it's really important to protect the book and try not to add additional spine stress to the book more than what you have to. There are many components in the spine, uh, the overall wrap of the book. We've got staples to consider, uh, spine ticks, any types of color breaks that have developed in the spine or possibly even spine tears and blunting of the corners. So we've got one, two, three, very imperceptible one right here, four, five spine ticks, six, seven, at the very, very bottom, very small one right there at the bottom. Adjacent to the spine, there is a slight spine roll or pressure crease that runs the length of the book up here all the way down. And it's about this far in from the edge. And it's very light, but that should be able to press out. And uh, what happened is basically someone put something on top of the book just to the right of the spine and it caused this indentation. So the pressing process will remove a number of these spine ticks and it will give the book a nice uniform flat look to it. And uh, that's really what you want to strive for. This corner here, let's take a look at this bottom corner. It is either missing a little bit of a piece or I'm not sure, or that could be just some uh, really poor blunting going on right there. Uh, I have this set of jeweler's glasses that I use to look at things uh, and it really magnifies, helps quite a bit. $9.99, uh, invaluable tool. Uh, I do recommend you pick one up. Now let's take a look at the top corner. And this one um, is a little bit blunted, but it looks much better. I do like uh, some of the coloration from the cover here. It shows minimal wear, minimal cracking. The colors look uh, really vibrant. And um, there's like a little bit of rope that's drawn um, from the trapeze that you can see right there. And it, it looks great. Now let's examine this top edge. And the top edge looks pretty good. Uh, there is, uh, here I'll hold it up closer so you can see it. And in this angle, you can see now a lot better that indentation that I was talking about earlier, running the length of spine. This is going to come out really nicely. In the final product as will a number of these non-color breaking spine ticks. Now I'm not sure if you can see it but there is a very deep crease here and I'm going to need to use my dotting tool very carefully to press that to sort of roll and press that crease back out before we do a final or a preliminary press on the book. But going back to this top edge uh, looks really good up here uh, Naya has a nice straight uniform look, maybe a couple little uh, finger bends there and one maybe right there. And this corner really concerns me, uh, doesn't look too good. Uh, there's a, definitely a color breaking crease and I'm not sure if it's rolled back, but uh, it looks like it just uh, needs a little bit of pressing to, to help, help that crease out. Right here, there's a little bit of a finger crunch, pretty, pretty noticeable that should correct. And running down the rest of that spine, oh, there's a little bit of gunk on the clown's back. I don't know if you saw that. And then we have a chip on that corner. 
The bottom edge looks pretty solid. There's a little bit of wear and uh, there's a little bit of a finger bend crease here at the bottom. I think you can kind of see it there right below Dead Man. And that does look to be a little bit like it's uh, slightly color break breaking. So now that I've got the book up and at an angle, I'm going to kind of reflect it off the light and see if I can pick up any gunk or dirt or additional stains that I might not have seen. Uh, there's something right in here, uh, just to the left of this woman. Looking down the left side over here, I see a little bit of gunk right in there. Um, there's something that's a little bit of maybe a printer's crease or a little ripple there. Uh, I see a little bit of dirt right in this area, right around where this dead man skull is. And as I go over here to the right, I see again that um, little stain or dirt clump or whatever that is on the back of the clown. And scanning up the tower there. I'm really impressed with the colors of the book. They really look nice. And there's some additional creasing there. Um, there's a little bit of dirt or wear. I think it's dirt. I see some gunk up here. There's a pretty good stain here now that I've noticed. There is a stain that develops off of Dead Man's head and it kind of goes up and around. And um, it's really substantial. You can't see it. Let's see if I can get the angle so that you can see the stain. But it is substantial and it should have been mentioned in the grader's notes for sure. It is significant. It goes up there into the logo and to the right there. It's difficult to see. So um, this area though, all in all, it looks pretty good up here on the title. I don't see a whole lot of, of issues with the colors or any of that. Okay, let's um, turn the book over now because the majority of the defects and uh, the chance for getting a bump in this grade of this book are going to be found by correcting some of the issues on the back of the book. So uh, when you when you put the backer board on top and flip it over, be always be very careful and uh, be careful removing this top backer board because sometimes the top or the back page, the, the cover can get stuck under your finger without you realizing it and you can lift the book and cause some damage. All right, so I'm going to hold this up and just take a look at the book in the light. There's some issues with the book. The spine itself looks much better on the back than the front. There, uh, the staples look fine. This one, the top one looks good. Bottom one looks good as well. Corners show a little bit of blunting. But all in all, the spine looks pretty good. I've got a, a stain up here at the top with a little bit of gloss loss. And then over here on this top left corner is another stain that's bigger. So um, just kind of checking this out outside edge. That one looks pretty good. The uh, corner up here, the stain does have some issues and it will be needed to be fixed. Um, just sort of looking over the the book, edges on the back look much better, uh, I think, than the front, or as good as the front. Now, right here, there's a little pock mark. Something got under the page and caused a raised section. I can repair that with the dotting tool. So I'm going to check to see what I can see. Oh, there it is on the back. I see it right here. And is there anything on the page stuck, maybe a piece of dirt or some goop? I don't feel anything here. No, it feels normal. But that does need to be corrected. So there's quite a bit of grime on the book. Um, down in this lower area right in here, I see a lot of grime. And right here, this looks like a foxing stain, but I'm not positive. But um, this book looks pretty good on the back, has tremendous potential for a heat overlay press treatment. And that can be done with just some distilled water and um, the, the, the press, and then putting it under the blue light. And uh, that really should help. What it does is it, the, uh, you take a blank piece of paper, like printer paper that's saturated in distilled water, and what it does is when it's pressed, it causes a steaming effect, and it literally lifts the dirt and grime off the comic cover and into the the overlay piece that you put on. And all of this up here should look much better afterwards. I think it's going to be a dramatic 
a dramatic change for the better. So I'm just sort of uh, looking again once over holistically. There is some uh, discoloration in the book. You can see down here at dust shadow, it's pretty prominent. But this upper area right here really does stand out in terms of the colors. And now I'm going to take a look on the inside. And the inside is yellowed without a doubt. And, and I see some little areas of pink. And what I've done in the past is I've just put a book underneath the blue light, the LED blue light, and that, that, that pink discoloration just disappears. All right, let's uh, go back to the front of the book. So let's flip it over. Let's take a look at the front of the book again. And I want to see the inside of this front cover. And that also has some of the yellowing that we see in the back cover and some of that pink discoloration. I really believe that a good 30 minutes to an hour under the blue light will dramatically change that. And I don't think it's um, color lift from this first page. It, it just doesn't, they don't seem to match. But this is going to improve the inside of the, the cover quite a bit. The interior pages look pretty good. Uh, I think this was uh, off white to white. And as they go further in the book, you can see that the pages look much whiter. Uh, there is some discoloration, some yellowing down here at the bottom, but the interior pages look great. So as we begin to develop an action plan for uh, this particular book, the first step is going to be focusing on dry cleaning the book and um, focusing on getting the dirt and grime that's off the page. And uh, after that, uh, working on uh, some of these whites and literally using a white eraser to go in and, and clean up some of the white, um, the white colors on the book. So for cleaning the excess dirt on the cover on the front and the back, I use and uh, use, recommend this a simple facial pad. You can get these online. Um, this is an Absarine eraser, or at least it's a small section that I've cut of one, and I feel that this is a superior tool in cleaning a lot of the um, grime and discoloration that's not picked up by the facial pad. Uh, this really is a great tool, but you can't, you can overdo it. So uh, it's best not to do that. Now for some of the, uh, the whites on the book, I'm just going to use a, a simple white eraser and that'll pick up those, uh, those areas and, and get those areas nice and white and bright. So we'll see if there are some areas where there's some grime that's difficult to come off. Uh, my last resort tool that I use for that uh, may be, uh, for example, a, uh, a dryer sheet. And I could use that to pick up some of these, this crud in here if it doesn't come up. Now, uh, for some of the creasing, like this crease along the spine and some of these indentations, I really highly recommend using uh, th this, uh, which is a dotting tool. You can buy these. I picked up these uh, on Amazon. You can get them at Hobby Lobby, any hobby place. They're essentially used to decorate cakes and uh, create kind of a dotting effect on cakes, but they work, I think, very, very good. Uh, they're, I think, superior to using a, uh, a, a large ball bearing. Uh, I feel like I have a lot of control with these dotting tools. And um, when I get to the point where we utilize those, I'll show you some of my techniques. Uh, here is a, um, a large bar, ball bearing that I, I mentioned. Uh, I don't really, I, I have these, but I don't really like them in comparison to the dotting tool because I just feel the dotting tool is very precise. I can use it like a pencil and I really can focus it on an area. And I have uh, the kit that I have has lots of different uh, sizes. Before giving this book a final press, I would like to apply a heat overlay press, which is essentially a, a blank sheet of printer paper saturated with some uh, distilled water. And that uh, process will help to move some of the dirt up into the paper and off the page of the cover. And I think it'll give this cover a really nice appearance. Uh, some of these small areas of uh, grime and grit that don't get picked up with these two tools they will come up off the page 
with the heat overlay press. And then from there, I can uh, work on my final presses of the book. And we should see a really nice result with a nice standardized, solid, flat surface, uh, free of creasing. And there's quite a bit of creasing in the book as it is right now. It's, uh, it's substantial. So let's turn it over and take a look at the back side again. The heat overlay press, I think, will be most effective on the back side in combination with some LED blue light. Really, the focus should be, I think, here on trying to get up some of this, uh, this dust shadow that we can see down in here and it kind of runs along um, the perimeter. Uh, I think this all will lighten, and if it can, then it's possible that this book might be able to move more than one grade uh, up, but again, I wanna try to stay realistic. I still think this book has tremendous potential to move up from its current grade. So after uh, developing this plan, the goal is going to be to try to get a bump in this grade. I do think, though, however, we need to keep uh, expectations reasonable. I think shooting for at least a one grade bump from a 4.5 to a 5.5 five is realistic with this book. And uh, we just really won't know uh, until after um, we do some of the treatments on the back of this cover to see how much of the staining can be removed and alleviated from the book. So uh, it is a beautiful book. Uh, the back does need a lot of work, but I think there is uh, a chance, a very strong chance that this, this we could get a, a nice grade bump with this book uh, of one grade from a four five to a five five. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video. I wanna really encourage you to hit that subscribe button and hit the like button. Uh, in support of this channel and this video it gets that YouTube algorithm out there uh, pushing this video out to as many people that like this type of content so um, please take a look at some of my other videos that I've got uh, on the, uh, the screen here above for you to take a look at and I really want to thank you for being part of my channel and thank you for all of your support hey, if you have not yet voted for the comic book community awards make sure you get your vote in uh, the time is running out i think there's about one week left to vote for your favorite uh, content creators here on youtube take a look at some of these exciting videos we've got here on the screen and as always happy hunting <laughs>